good morning, another Saturday, another live Q&A. This is Anatai. I'm the creator of the Facebook group and actually a Facebook page as well, The Natural Alternative ADHD Treatment. And I'm also the author of the Eat to Focus book where I talk about um, nutritional changes and diet changes, supplements, activities that helps to develop and boost the ADHD brain. And yeah, so I do this every day or every Saturday. So again, we're going to go over some questions. So I have a bunch of questions here. And some of you might have noticed that I was answering questions in the group. So I'm actually live on both Facebook Facebook and Instagram as well. So for those of you who are not on Facebook and want to be in the group, you can hop over to the Facebook side and search for the group Natural Alternative ADHD Treatment. And make sure you answer all the questions like a human being and you'll be admitted in the group because we try to screen out all the trolls out there. So and try to make this group as friendly as possible. So hi people are showing up so I'm gonna get started so so like I said I do this every Saturday answering questions so if you have any question you can put it in the comments I'll see if I can actually see it and if not you can just go to the Facebook group and put in your question I try to answer most of the question when I have the time um, so first question actually first it's really not a question but I just want to put my um, opinion out there because um, someone posted kind of a question about asking why we're not allowed to discuss or promote CBD, Brillia, and NRF2. So I recently changed the rules in the group to kind of not allow those discussion and there are many reasons why. First of all, I'm a licensed healthcare provider so I kind of have my own rules to abide, abide by. So I'm not allowing, I'm not creating this group for just any random trolls to come in and promote their product that is proven to not work and make a profit out of these people that I'm trying to support. So that's number one rule. Second one rule is all those three things. I know there's a lot of like CBD stuff out there right now because it is legal in some state but there's not enough research in children there's only one medication one cbd um, derivative medication that is actually approved fda approved to use in children for seizure in a very specific um, genetic disorder so that will be the only thing and it is a prescription and it is not going to be discussed here as well because it does not apply to adhd um, the other two are just junk that I look up the research. There's no strong research. The only thing that people are selling here is that, oh yeah, I, I, um, my child uses it and it works and you use this link and you're going to get 20% off of something like that. And the other reason why I banned those two items is because I got a lot of complaints from people um, trying to sell this product in the group. So like I said, this group is a support group to help each other out. So I want to focus on things that actually work. It is not a place for you to promote your product and make a profit out of these people. Okay, I got myself clear and then let's move on. Okay. Uh, okay, let's, let's get to the first one. Oh wait, actually, let's read something happy first. Uh, let me see if I can still find it. Oh, here. Um, happy stuff. This is the reason why I want to have this group is when you try something and it makes a difference, put it out there. It's like you're helping other parents and other people with ADHD to know the possibility. It's kind of like the same thing as the four minute mile. Um, it's like many, many years ago, for the, in the 1970s, no one ever believed that running a four minute mile is possible. But then this guy 
after training, training, keep repeating the process, he actually did it. And once he, he broke the record of running a mile in four minutes, the year after that, so all these other people start, start to be able to do the four minute mile. So all you need is just that one person, someone to show you that it is possible. So that's why when you see any something that helped you, you put it out there. But again, it is not a place for promotion. So anyway, so let's keep going. So like I said, this is a happy post, something to show that it is possible. And it also shows that you don't need to spend a lot of money on some expensive supplement that they sell in MLM or go to a foreign country to buy a special camel milk. It's really simple, this whole natural alternative ADHD treatment thing. Like people often think, make things so complicated, so they think that the treatment or the solution is just as complicated. But the thing is really simple. And if you read my book and read my blog, it's really simple. All, all I'm focusing on the way that I treat or help with the ADHD is really just going back to the very beginning where, where all, the, all your brain tissue comes from, from the food and the nutrition that you eat. You don't need to have something fancy and everything. That's a good place to start. And then everything else just kind of makes it even better. So anyway, let me just read and shut up. Okay, I'm new to the group and my nine-year-old son was diagnosed with ADHD when he was eight years old by means of a questionnaire and was quickly described an amphetamine to control his tendencies. So I guess tendency means his ADHD symptoms. So he took the medication for eight months. Yes, his grades soared from C's to A's and B's and yes, his peer relationship thrived. And yes, his organization and focus improved greatly as well. But we lost our boy. It wasn't him. He grew so depressed and angry at the age of eight and also complained that his heart felt weird. And we opt to take him completely off the medication. He now takes, takes fish oil, vitamin B6, probiotic, and a multivitamin. We also pay close attention to his diet. Guess what? He still makes A's and B's. Social skills organization are coming along. But most importantly, we have our happy, strong, healthy boy back. I'm eager to read the information in this group and learn more. Thank you so much for sharing this. This is very inspirational. So that's, like I said, it's really not that complicated. It's just that we just have to do a little bit more. Medication works for some people, not all of it. But in this case, if the medication is doing all the things that you want your child to, right? Like to focus and have better relationship, but then you lost his personality. In that case, the question is that is the medication really working for you? Because the thing is, we are all here as parents. We want our kids to have the best best life, best of everything. We want them to be able to focus and to sit still and to learn in school. But if I can get my child with a good grade, but I lost my child, he's not happy. He's a different person. He walks around like a zombie. His creativity is gone. Like, is it worth it? So, and it's something that, again, is about natural ADHD alternative treatment. And I was talking to, um, someone recently, I can't remember who I talked to. But anyway, um, in medicine, I work in a big, I work in a big military hospital. Everything is evidence-based. But you know what the problem is? In medicine, conventional medicine, there's only two options for everything. You either medicate or you cut, which is surgery. That's the only choices with conventional medicine. On the other hand, with alternative medicine, there's so many different options because with alternative medicine, we look at the whole body, a whole body as a whole. Like even though I'm a dietitian and I focus on more of the eating and the nutrient supplements and all of those, but I also look at the whole, whole child and the whole person as an individual. 
and I'm also a hypnotherapist, so I also look at the psychological and the mental health of everything. So that's the reason why with alternative medicine, there's so, so much more um, modalities to, to use to treat someone is because as a person, we have different parts. We're not just a physical being. And a lot of the things that we do in life, like picking our food choices, logically, we're supposed to all pick the healthy choices. But then at the same time, we all like the junk food as well. So that's the emotional part of, of it too, is that we just don't live for, for the nutrient. We also live for the joy of life and being alive, being able to, to have feelings, to feel feel all the different feelings, feeling happy, feeling sad, and calm off those. That's what makes us human. It's not, it's not just about like making sure we eat only the healthy food and be, be subjected to all the society rules and expectations. So we do need to learn to have a life to live. So anyway, my little soapbox. But that's great. All these things help. And these are like all the um, supplements that I always recommend to start with, like um, fish oil, magnesium, zinc, and iron, vitamin D. I, those are important too, but I usually check the labs first before starting those, but probiotics is another good one as well, and um, a B-complex supplements. All of those are great, great ones to start with. Um, and then there's something I want to talk about here as well from this post is um, the depression and anger. Again, um, actually not again, just to go back a little bit about how medication works. The medication works by making the whatever amount of brain chemicals you already have in your body to keep circulating in the system longer. Because normally when the brain chemicals are generated, it get recycled or it get discarded. And it's like a passageway where it comes out and then it goes down to the next station, and next station, and next station. So when that happens, the, the amount or the level decreases. So that's one of the, the kind of defects or, or difference in the ADHD brain is that the chemicals are lower. But then the problem is with medication, this drug company said, oh yeah, this medication can raise your, your dopamine level or whatever brain chemicals level. But no one ever asked, why is your dopamine or your other brain chemicals level low, right? Because, and then they just keep playing on the, oh, it's the ADHD brain, it just doesn't make enough. But then why is it that you're not making enough, right? So then we need to start digging deeper. Maybe the reason why the brain's not making enough is maybe a premature baby, not seeing in the mom's belly long enough to, to have everything developed properly. Maybe the diet is deficient. So if your diet is all full of carbs and sugar, there's really not enough protein to make anything. And if you think about a child, like a brand new baby, they gain about 30 grams a day, which is about an ounce a day. If that's a brand new baby, or if a, a older children, like a toddler, they gain about like 10, 15 grams a day, then where are you, where are you getting all these nutrients? Like you have, they have to eat enough to support them just surviving. Then the next layer is to support that growth, right? And then there's also, you have to consider all the other brain chemicals and hormones and all those things that keeps the function, keep the body function properly. And all these brain chemicals and hormones are actually protein itself. So if you feed your child every morning, all these carbs and sugar, which is something that I see every single day, all these kids come in, oh, what, what does they eat for? What do they eat for breakfast? Usually something like a big bowl of cereal or like some Pop-Tarts. Um, what else do they eat? Cereal is the most common and then Pop-Tarts and, and pretty much a lot of carbs or toast and, and fruit and things like that. And then the same thing with the, with the snack as well. I was like, oh, what, what does your child eat for snack? Oh, um, cookies, granola bars, fruits, um, fruit ro rolled ups, fruit snack. So it's just all day. Your child is just getting all these carbs and sugar. So if again going back to how how I I um, treat ADHD, 
is really to try to help the brain to catch up with growing. So when we think of growing, your child is developing brain tissue, muscle tissue, heart tissue, lung tissue, and all of those things. Where, what do you think those tissue comes from? It doesn't come from sugar and carbs. Sugar and carbs is a source of energy. It only provides for energy, but it is something that your body cannot use to make tissue. It cannot be turned into muscle tissue. It can't be turned into brain chemicals. It can't be turned into hormones that helps regulate the mood and the time to sleep and when to, to wake up and all of those. So protein is important, but it's not the only thing, but just knowing that your child is growing and even adult, even though adult is done are done growing, it doesn't mean that it's nutrition is not important in adult. Adults, because they're not growing, but every day they still go through the metabolism of breaking down and building things. So adults focus is more on repairing and regenerating. So protein is still important, but we need to understand some basic human nutrition where we do need all the carbohydrate, protein, and fats as well. We're not just an empty bucket that we fill it up and then we gain weight and then we dump the stuff out of the bucket and lose weight. That's not human. Human, our body is super complex. Everything goes through a, a biochemical process that, um, that's too complicated to talk about here. But anyway, the body is complicated. It's not calories in, calories out. And in the whole body, every single biochemical reaction, nothing, nothing talks about calories. Calories is a measurement of food. How much energy when we burn a food in a, some kind of in, in incubator in the labs. It does not happen in the human body because inside this human body, there's no fire. Like there's no one holding a match and lit a fire. There's nothing. So calories does not matter in the human body. What matters is um, macronutrients and micronutrients. That's what our body recognizes. Our body, all the chemical, biochemical reaction in our body that happens that keep us alive, nothing in our body makes calories. So it's just a measurement for scientists to measure um, food energy, which which kind of like um, imagination. Anyway, thank you so much for sharing that. Mm, what is that? Okay, let's answer this one. How do you remove food dyes? And can I, can I get recommendations? Candy, what else? Ketchup needs help. Okay. Um, so this question is kind of interesting because to remove food dye, I hope she's not meaning that to remove the food dye actually from the food itself, but to remove food dye from the diet basically means that you need to find out what food dyes are, how, um, what exactly they are, and where they are at. Because without knowing that, you just don't know because natural food comes in different colors, right? Like if you go to the, the grocery store, to the produce section, fruits, vegetables come in all different colors. But are those the colors that you're trying to avoid? So what we're talking about here, food dyes or food coloring of those things, we're talking about the artificial food coloring that is added to the food. And um, I don't exactly know where exactly they, each different color comes from, but I place something that you probably would not want to eat once you find out where it came from. And I know most of it comes from petroleum, which is things that actually goes in your car as well. And we're not a car, so. But anyway, food colorings, we're talking about the artificial food colorings that are added to food. <coughs> not for the health purpose, but just to make the food look pretty. And so that way it's appealing to the human eye and then we'll buy more. So it's more for, for aesthetic um, reasons so the manufacturer can sell more and um, all of these years everyone just keep thinking oh yeah it's just fine it's just like a couple little drops of stuff to put in the food to make the food looks nicer looks more fun and and then there are things that 
that comes out and start showing that some people are sensitive to these things. And again, your food allergy is not always about the food. Sometimes your food sensitivity is you or your child might be sensitive to the food additives added to the food and food additives will include things like food colorings, preservatives, sometimes even antibiotics put in the, the animals or pesticides that is in the animal's feed or pesticide use on um, produce when they're growing the plant. So all of those, anything that is added to the food supply chain or processing that wasn't there when God made the food is an additive um, and that all of them have potential to change our body chemistry. You can be either sensitive to it or it actually affects your brain chemicals or your hormonal signaling. Again, because our body is a is a big like a big bag of um, cells that all runs on biochemical reaction. So any kind of chemicals that you put in this body have a potential to interact with our own biochemistry. And every one of us, even though we're all human, we share most of the genetic materials, but every one of us is slightly different. So someone who, you might have someone who can totally eat like junk food all day long, have no issue, but then you have other people that just eating a little bit of something that have food coloring will act up. That's the, the, the reason why we're all different because we're just all slightly different and we're, we're all different because of our environment as well. So, um, oh, go on. Answering that question, how to remove food dyes. So you need to find out where they are. So most majority of the food colorings are in processed food. So processed food, we're talking about things that comes out from a package or from a box, frozen meals, frozen dinners, fast food restaurant. And these are usually food that is manipulated in, in a factory. So I usually call them factory food because they're usually manipulated in the factory. And some of this actually was manipulated in a, in a lab first. Like a lot of the artificial sugar sweeteners are actually made in a lab. Some of them, I think a couple of them claims that they're natural because it's made from sugar but they're still genetically engineered or modified because they take the natural sugar into the lab, tweak a couple of the molecules so that the body doesn't absorb it. But nonetheless, it turns it into a chemical. So it turns it from, actually sugar is not quite actually real food anyway. But anyway, so it turns it into another chemical that the body doesn't recognize. Anything that you put in your body that your body doesn't recognize it is considered as junk and your body will start to to activate its immune system or its detox system or whatever it is to try to get rid of that piece of junk. And just quick review of human nutrition is what your body actually recognizes. Your body recognizes macronutrients, so carbohydrate, protein, fats, and water. So those are your four macronutrients. I know most of you only, only focus on the three, but your body is 70% water. So that's a huge, huge, huge macronutrients if you're not monitoring your water intake. And then the other um, micronutrients, which there are a lot of, which I'm not gonna list all of it, but I'll list them by ca category. So your micronutrients are mostly your vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And these are all the things that your body needs to function properly because micronutrients are like keys that turns on biochemical reaction in your body that keeps you alive. So that's the reason why we need to eat vegetables. Oh, okay. Um, so she wants recommendation for candy. So I'll say my recommendation for candy, if you like something sweet, is to go, go for fruit. Fruit is something that we're all so, so, brainwashed to think that fruits is so healthy because it comes from a plant. It's kind of like vegetable, so it must be good. The thing is fruits have fruit sugar in it. I'm not trying to be a food police here. I'm trying to help you to understand that not everything that comes from nature is good. So with fruit, 
it is okay to eat it, but you should actually um, consider fruit as more a, of a dessert or a candy, rather than just letting yourself or your child munch on fruit all day long, fruit juice, fruit roll-ups, fruit snack, um, dry fruits and all those all day long. Just treat it as a dessert. Eat it after meal, after lunch, after dinner, as part of the meal. That's a better way to eat fruit. The reason why is the sugar in fruit is not the same as the other sugar that you might find or the other kind of carbs you find in vegetables or starchy vegetables or in other stuff. The, the sugar in fruit is actually called fructose. It is processed differently in the body. It still gives your body energy, but it is processed more like an alcohol. Alcohol is processed in a liver, so fructose is the same. It is processed in the liver as well, and it's enough energy. Um, there's still some benefit in eating fruits because when you eat fruit, you do get vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat fruit. I'm just saying that knowing that fruit sugar is processed differently, you should try to limit how often you're eating it. Um, and then she also mentioned about something like ketchup. You know, um, ketchup, even though supposedly comes from tomatoes, but if you pick up a bottle of ketchup nowadays, actually ketchup is really a syrup, like a tomato flavor syrup. So if you really want something healthy for ketchup, make your own ketchup. Um, and... I think there might be sugar-free ketchup out there, but I don't, I have not seen any or try any. But the thing is, like I said, I'm not being food police here. So if you really want ketchup, just, just use a little bit and not too much. Like this is something that I used to, a mistake that I used to make because that was when, um, okay, I'm a registered dietitian. So I went through all the conventional training, like, all this how every other registered dietitian is trained and and it's the same thing like I told you a lot of the things that I'm talking about right now in my blog in my book and everywhere is not taught in nutrition school and definitely your doctor would not even know at all because they they don't have any nutrition class at all and I always think that it is funny like when you read something in a magazine or in a book they'll be like oh yeah this 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 is good for you but check with your doctor first I was like um, the doctor don't know anything about nutrition. They come to me asking for all kinds of questions. So why are you telling them to go to the doctor? They're just gonna send them, send send you to me. So, but anyway, um, yeah, a lot of these things, a lot of the food that is in the market that is considered as healthy, a lot of dietitian or conventional trained registered dietitian, and even doctors are still recommending that. But in functional side, in functional integrative nutrition medicine, those things are different because we understand that the whole biochemical um, process in the body. So like things like diet soda, like um, the studies originally says it's safe, but there are actually a couple, couple um, artificial sweeteners actually can cause kidney, I think kidney cancer. And they do it in red, but of course they're like, Oh, it only happened in red. It doesn't happen in human. Like, seriously, like, if it can potentially cause cancer, I'm not touching it, right? And then, um, and uh, again, a lot of those um, artificial sweetener studies are actually paid for the company who makes it. So do you really believe them? And I'm also speaking from my own experience, from helping people with the diet change all these years. It doesn't matter what all the studies out there talk about because I like all these studies you can you can manipulate your studies in such a way to get the outcomes that you want. It's like the the, um, the studies actually said that cholesterol in the diet causes high cholesterol. That study was whacked. Now like after what 30, 40 years someone finally said something. And then um there's all these other things, but anyway. Diet soda. There's still a lot of people don't believe that diet soda or the artificial sweeteners cause any problem in the body. But again, going back to what I was talking about is any kind of chemicals that you put in your body is going to affect your body because your body is a 
It's a huge, giant bag of biochemical reaction happening every single day. To say that those chemicals doesn't affect you is like you pretty much have to believe that medication doesn't work because medications are all chemicals, but they're all a lot more meticulously designed to do to interfere with a very specific chemical reaction in the body. So they are all the same thing. Any man-made chemicals is going to affect your body in a way. The matter is how much it impacts you. So with the artificial sweeteners, no matter what people say, whether it doesn't do anything to them, this is my own experience. I've seen a lot of people and women specifically try and lose weight with binge eating problems, can't control that eating. Almost 100% of all my patients who stop diet soda, the first week sucks. Second week still kind of sucks a little bit. But after they completely stop the diet soda, every one of them, 100% of them says that the sugar cravings, the food cravings stops. So, and the thing is, people often think that it's the taste. And I, I can't find this study. I was reading it. It was really interesting. So the scientists trying to figure out if it's the taste of the, the soda that is stimulating the eating or the cravings. But what they did is they're like, you know what? Let's try to feed it differently. So you, we usually drink the soda and then we taste the sweetness, right? Because our tongue have that sweet taste. But then they tweak the study a little bit instead of having the subject drink it they actually put a feeding tube so then instead of drinking and tasting the soda the sweetness of this the soda the the people or the subject is actually ingesting soda through a feeding tube that goes straight to the stomach by passing the taste buds so they don't even taste the soda at all but what they found is that people who are ingesting the soda without tasting the sweetness still have the same sugar cravings as someone who was actually drinking the sweet soda. So that was really interesting. So that's something you need to, to start thinking, like, is it really the sweetness that is making me crave the sugar and the other food? Or is it the chemicals in the soda that's causing it? Um, what time is it? I still have some time. Okay, I'll try to answer this. We read this one already. Let's see, how about I answer that already? Here, let's read this one. What supplements do you all give your children? Seven-year-old boy. His main issue is impulsivity, so verbal and physical, and sometimes extra hyperactivity. Not concerned about that, he's a kid. Yep, totally agree. Just trying to help his anxiety and help his brain to stay focused on tasks at school. So I love that she talked about the hyperactivity and she's not, she's not concerned about that. So just want to go a little bit or just quickly about the diagnosis of ADHD. Um, I'm not a physician, so I'm just speaking about this as a dietitian and also as an informed parent. Um, if you go back to look at the diagnosis of ADHD, you actually have to have those symptoms for I think six months and it's inter interfering with your life and socials and things like that and i think sometimes this is my opinion now so you can say whatever you want if you don't like it just close your ear in my opinion i think sometimes uh, or we over diagnosed um adhd or over labeled children with adhd because like um seven year old child being a little bit more active to me, it's normal for a child to be active. You want them to be active because when they're active means that they're, they're curious. You want your child to be curious. You don't want your child to be sitting down there for like four, five, six hours a day to learn. That's what the society wants us. And these are all conditioning from 40, 50 years when, when the whole world um, go from farming to industrialization. Our school system nowadays are still operating in the same system and the same goal as 40, 50 years ago. The school system back then, the goal is to train factory workers, 
to produce factory workers to work in factories that their horse require are required to sit at the same spot all day without questioning authority, without questioning anything. That's not what we want our kids for. Today's the world is different. We don't need factory workers. So we don't really need our kids to sit down all day long and memorize everything. Nowadays in this society, it's all about solving problems, creating new ideas, critical thinking and collaborating. Like there was this, this um, interview that I listened to a while back that was really interesting. So in school, even from, from when I was growing up, I grew up in a Catholic school. And of course, it's the same thing, right? You have to memorize everything. If you try to ask your, your neighbor for, for answer, you're, you're considered cheating. And I got caught multiple times because I just like to talk in class. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, that's how damaging school could be is that the way that they treating your child, not letting them ask questions, making them be quiet all day long and just sit there and listen is damaging to your child's development. And like was studying to become a hypnotherapist and go doing a lot of therapy on my own, I realized that a lot of my limiting beliefs of myself actually stem from like constantly being punished in school and being different all the time in school and not having a voice or not allowing a voice to voice my own opinion and all of those. But anyway, so the school today is still operating in the same, same, um, um, a goal to create, create factory workers. But today we need our kids to be more interactive. And oh, the interview I was talking about. So in school, we're not allowed to talk to anyone. We're, we're taught to do everything on your own, right? But then now, if you look at in society nowadays, everyone is collaborating with everyone else. And as entrepreneur or someone starting their own business, you don't, you just can't run a successful business on your own. And all these are proven with a lot of people. Like you, you don't need to know everything. You just need to know who to ask and hire the people who have the best knowledge or better than you. So that's how the world works now is knowing how to solve problems is a lot more important than memorizing everything in a book. Like I remember in high school, I have to memorize all the, in my biology class, I actually have to memorize the passages. Like I'm not even tested on how a chemical reaction works. I'm tested on how good I memorized the whole chapter. So, and um, yeah. Good thing I still retain some and I get into college and I was fine. So, uh, anyway, let's see. Did I answer the whole question? Oh, impassivity. Okay. So anytime we're talking about behavior, again, the way I look at it is look back. Anytime I see things like impulsivity, lack of focus, off those, those are signs and symptoms. So we need to look what's causing those symptoms. So usually like in a seven year old, like um, for this person, if you want to schedule an appointment with me, I can help you out with this because I cannot exactly give you what to do because I don't know how the guy is. Um, I'm not someone to just say, oh yeah, start this vitamins, but you need to work on the diet part as well because what your child or what you eat has a lot to do with the brain chemicals and all those. Like we talk about anything, many chemicals that goes in your body is going to affect brain chemicals, hormones, and all this other biochemical reaction. Food also is chemicals. Every food that we eat carries chemical, natural chemical signals that signal that interacts with our brain chemicals and hormonal signalings and all of those things. So pretty much anything that you put in your mouth have a potential to change your behavior, to change your thinking, and change something in your body. So that's something to have keep in mind that when you try to think, oh, I'm hungry, what should I eat? So that's something to think about, especially if you know that eating certain food is gonna cause a certain reaction, definitely 
it is science to tell you that your body is not simple an empty vessel and um, and again you just have to pay attention not everyone that's the reason why a lot of times with my patient I always have to remind them all these things all this diet health recommendations you see on these health magazines from the website or these gurus that gurus talk about how you should eat what you should eat when you should eat and all those try to not listen to those because these people do not know you they're just giving you some kind of very general recommendation it's like a renal diet just like a, a kidney patient right like if a kidney patient go flip out a magazine and read oh yeah okay yeah it's healthy to eat to have oranges to eat potatoes and bananas and bananas oranges all those are perfectly fine for you and me without any kidney problems but for someone with kidney disease eating oranges and bananas every day probably is going to damage the kidneys like even more or faster so that's something that people need to understand that we're all each very different it's fine that you read some of those recommendations and kind of like figure out what works for you and whatnot but don't take them as the rule or the law if you really want to have the best health and ultimate health an um, uh, eating eating lifestyle that works for you you need to work with a healthcare provider who understand how food and nutrition works not just some random people telling you oh yeah you need to eat this every day like i was reading a post someone talking about camel milk i was like okay if camel milk is so magical so does that mean that countries who have camels and people who drink camel milk there have no disease at all no so the whole thing is here is we need to focus on the bigger picture rather than focusing on one nutrients or one food item or one supplement this is the reason why i I spent all these years doing research and putting everything into the book is that to treat anything we need to look at the whole body as a whole look at the all different body system the the physical part of the body and the mental part of the body because we are very complicated human beings so it's not something that oh yeah I have ADHD here's the pill for ADHD it's not that simple <coughs> okay I think I'll answer just one more question but um, let me see if I actually answer this whole question because I just talk um, oh yeah so the hyperactivity that's fine and impulsivity so usually with impulsivity usually means that either part of the brain that controls the impulsiveness is kind of sleepy or the brain chemicals is not there so like I said with this person I don't really know too much of the diet history and things like that but definitely I would recommend working on the diet um, getting more protein throughout the day if you haven't already done so and then maximizing nutrients intake because again for the brain to function properly we have to do all the brain that makes the brain happy which is happy brain food and um, and then correcting any um, nutrients deficiency and then the environment too right if you have like the perfect diet and everything is all down in you have taking all the right supplements but every day your child is in constant stress maybe maybe having um, two different household that the child gets shipped back and forth or parents not in a good relationship or someone living in the household always constantly yelling and, and screaming or the child just not getting the attention feeling like they're different or maybe the child's having problem at school being bullied or being punished all the time like that was actually my story like when when we're doing regression and I realized that a lot of my memories in school was that I was the weird child growing up in school I have no friends no one wants to play with me and I'm always alone and on top of that I'm always being punished because I I talk in class and you see how as a little child when you're like five six seven years old in a child 
in a school being punished for being a child, you grow up to become an adult, have no, no self-confidence, no self-esteem, feeling that you're just a piece of garbage because you're, you're always being punished. Because when you, you're being punished, you just don't feel that you're a good person as a child. So, but then now as a grown-up adult, I was like, what? You punished me for talking in class? Like, that's why God gave me a mouth and a voice so I can speak and talk. I'm using that here for you guys. So, uh, okay, let's see. I think I'm going to stop here today. But like I said, if you have any question, put it in the comment. And I'll continue to um, answer more questions in the Facebook group as much as I can. But if you really want to reach me and I'm not answering your question on Facebook, because Facebook is like happening a lot. I just can't answer everything. Just message me privately and if you want an appointment with me message me as well and then we can get you all set up all right okay well thank you very much everyone who's watching or for those of you watching the replay thank you so much have a very very good day okay bye